Stop trying to be your child's friend. Stop trying to be your child's friend. This is a video response back to you, um, Ren 10. Overlooking your email. And, and, and just, when y'all ask me for my little advice, my little two cents, please understand that it's out of love. Because, see, I was brought up in a different time. Why? Old school, they didn't play. Parents didn't play. And even if you didn't have a father in the home, them old school generations of people didn't play. They knew what discipline was. They knew how to give it. They knew when to draw the line. Now, you may not believe in whooping your child like a lot of people I know. And I'm not talking about beating, 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 beating where you're kidding the child. Y'all know what I'm saying. The Bible say don't spread a rod. And a lot of people miss that scripture. They don't believe in that scripture. Even say a good whooping to keep your child out of hell. If you really catch what the scriptures are saying. But I want to use this title. Stop trying to be your child's friend. Think about this. When a baby is born coming to this world. It's already, the baby already got a gimme, gimme, gimme mentality, right? Look at what you got to do. Feed me. Change me. Clothe me. A baby can't do nothing at first. And you got to recognize what this cries for. You either hungry or maybe he or she is wet. But you are your child's first teacher. You are. And if you don't teach them right from wrong, mm, you know the consequences of that. And when you spoil a child, you make them rotten. They're going to always be dependent on you instead of learning how to be independent. I see this type of stuff every day while I work at parents making a bargain with their kids. I see it in public. I see it in the stores. Making a bargain. Instead of laying down discipline. And then you wonder why your child don't respect you. Because they run over you. But see, children are smart. They know who they can get away with it on and who not. Instead of being a parent, you being a friend. Because you're not letting them know, I'm the parent. I'm your mother. It's what I say, go. You in my house. You ain't paying no bills. Until you get grown and on your own. See, y'all know how it go growing up. See, we we grew up in a different time, y'all. I can't I can't get down with what this generation is doing now. All this, 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 this kids telling the parents what to do. No, that wasn't even a thought in my mind back in the day. That's not even a that's not even a thought. Because they, you know the old saying it takes a village to raise a, a, a child. When I was growing up, we got whooped by the Sunday school teacher. We got whooped by the coach at school. We got whooped by the teacher at school. We got whooped by the counselor. We got whooped by the cafeteria lady. We got whooped by the principal. And then when we got home, we got even more whoopings. We got whooped by that dude that wasn't even my daddy. So you can't do that nowadays. But that's what kept us in line. Now the respect is lost for a lot of the older generations. Man, you got boys walking down the street with their pants sagging, cussing out the older men. Man, they wasn't like that. Man, come on, y'all. The respect has been lost, not just only in the home, but even out in public. When you become your child's friend, they ain't going to have no respect for you. And they're going to expect you to continue to bail them out in everything they do that's wrong. And you sit there and do it. I can't agree with that and I'll get down with that. And you say, why my child don't have my respect? That's why. Do you even respect yourself? 
how you gonna train up a child and you trying to be the child's friend? I never thought in my and, and, I, I never thought that I would see so many kids talk back to their parents in this day's time. Telling their parents what they ain't going to do, what they ain't going to eat, how they going to live. And you better buy me this. And you can't even get them to take the trash out. Can't even get them to wash dishes. Well, I know you got dishwashers and stuff now. But you can't even get them to do their chores. But they always want you to buy them this and buy them that. And you go and you trying to buy your child's relationship. They ain't going to never have respect for you. See, parenting hurts. <laughs> Tough love hurts. You know how many times my wife would tell me, I just, I just think you being too hard on Jada. I think you being too hard on Jay. Because see, when I was brought up, it was all boys. Our sister died at birth. Correct me on that, Mama JT, if I'm wrong. But I know I'm right. My wife have mostly all girls on the side of their family. And yes, it may be over, it looks overboard for Didi, but for me it's normal. Because I don't want my boy to be feminine. Like a lot of these boys are that I try to help. Growing up feminine. And all that whining and crying and trying to do everything that his sister do. No, I have to draw the line. I can't raise him like I raised Jada. See, Gabby grown now. Gabby is Gabby's getting ready to go off to college. So I got finna be eight. I got eight. Yeah, finna be 18. Or did she just turn 18? Four and five. Jada finna be four. Jade just turned five. Huge age gap. So it's a difference in how you do these bars. And if you don't, you see the outcome. And look at what we're living in now. Man, this, this world system wants to feminize our boys. They doing it. And most people, when you talk to them, they're like, I ain't going to say nothing about it. I am. Y'all know me. I don't bite my tongue. I don't, I don't care what your status is and who you are. Wrong is wrong. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Look at what, the, what, look at what Dwayne Wade was doing. Did with his, with his son. It's confusion. My little boy is only five. And he already walking around talking about this is what boys do. We men. He, him and his little sister get into it all the time. This is not for you two, two. This is for boys. And that's why sometimes I take Jay by myself. Get him away from the women in the house. We got two on two going on now. It's me and him, and it's Dee Dee and, and, and Jada. And Jada is very sensitive, very emotional, every day, all day. And it gets on his nerve. <laughs> Get on my nerve, too, but I have to deal with it as a parent. Because she will cry about anything. If the airplane don't fly the right way, she going to cry. And that's how timid my, my little girl is at times. But they watch us to learn right, right from wrong. You are an example. See, I'm to the point now, I don't have to whoop them because my voice, the tone of my voice, that look in my eye, all I got to do is look at Jada. She'll say, okay. Jada say, okay. And just watching them grow is such a blessing because he mimic himself after me. I love them. And that's why the Bible say fathers raise your children. It didn't say fathers be your child friend. It say fathers do not provoke your child to anger. Discipline your children. Not make bargains with them. See, if we're going to teach and live these scriptures, we better live and teach them. We better teach and live. I don't care how mad my kids get at me. I even tell Aditi all the time, I don't care how mad you get at me. This is this is how it's gonna go down. I know you don't understand it because you wasn't brought up with 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 seeing how you bring a boy up. You know you know about the girl side, but see, as a boy, he got to be taught, and it's gonna be some strict things 
And he may not understand it right now, but he'll get it when he get older. It's too many men not there for their children. And then a lot of men are. You sitting there trying to be your child's friend, you creating a monster. And think about it, as they get older and older and older and older, they're going to always expect their mama or daddy to bail them out if he's around. And I'm saying it because in our race, it's not a lot of, it's not a lot of fathers around. But I applaud the ones who are there. But it's not a lot around. It's, it's mostly single moms in the black race. Mostly single. Raising these boys, man. And you wonder why these boys keep coming up feminine. They, they unbalanced. They seeing on the one side. They feminine. I mean, it's like, and then they go out into this world. You got all this LGBT and transgender stuff going on. It's just confusing these children. And some of them living in that, at the house with somebody like that. Like I just said on the video the other day, you man, you, you causing confusion. And you're going to have to answer to that. Two women raising a girl. Oh, this my mama got a girlfriend. My daddy got a boyfriend. Come on, man. Wrong is wrong. It's one thing to 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 do yourself and disrespect yourself like that and disrespect the most high like that. But now you got you want to drag the children in the middle too? I don't care who getting mad at the truth. I love you. Love you enough to tell you the truth. Wrong is wrong. But when you keep on trying to be your child's friend, you ain't doing nothing but making that child worse and worse and worse and worse. And it's sad because they don't gain your respect. Because you don't even respect yourself enough to discipline them right. But that's my son. That's my daughter. I grew up With this, with this cat. I don't even think he ever knew who his daddy was. A lot of them I grew up with didn't even know who their daddy was. And every time they get, they would get in trouble, the mama, as a single mama, would take up for him. Keep on taking up. Knowing he was wrong. That's my boy. I, I just, he, in my eyes, he can't do no wrong. And then you wonder why the penitentiary got him. Get out the pen, go back to the pen. Get out the pen, go back to the pen. It's just a continuation of going in and out of the penitentiary. And I just say, you still ain't learning. I See, I deal with a lot of people out of prison. Going back to prison. I go up on the block. And that's why I talk hard the way I talk. Because, man, some this generation, this generation now especially, and even it's, even someone up mine that's older than me that's that's you know sixty and up you know fifty five and up fifty and up I had to talk to them that way because they 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 getting older and getting dumber <laughs> still making the same decisions why are you still on the block you fifty two years old you ain't got no car. You're still staying at the house with your mama. Mama's sick. Mama not doing good. You, you, you selling dope. You, you, come on, man. But it's out of love. And they always say, you know what, JT, you don't, man, you about the only one that come to me like this, like you, like you, Carol. Or let me say it like they say, man, you the only one that give a damn, man. It's like, don't nobody else coming to us like this. You make me mad when you talk to me like this. I say, good. Because if I ain't made you mad, I ain't done my job. If I ain't got your attention, I ain't done my job. Now, I do understand some just going to continue to reject truth and the gospel. We had a beautiful time at the women's shelter last night. And Minister Fuller, Reverend Fuller, brought a powerful word, very powerful. And he told the women, the ladies, that what I'm about to say is good news, and then I'm going to have to tell you the bad news. You had to beat out of her. And the women received the well. And then Pastor Tony told the women, this shelter, don't make this your home. This is temporary. Because our decisions, and see, this is why our children are looking up to us. And another point I wanted to make in this video, when your children watch your lifestyle, nine times out of ten, if you got more than one child, 
one of them gonna pattern themselves out the same way you did it. And that's not speaking bad on nobody. If you as a mother letting these men in and out your house in front of your daughters and your son, don't you think they watching? You know, I watch my mama do this and I, I can't believe I, I, I pattern myself out to my mama. And you know why so many parents can't get along with their children? Because they so much alike. They too much alike. But in their eyes, they don't see it. They point fingers. But in reality, they do the same thing and they just alike. But one try to make their sins look worse than the other. Well, you did the same thing. You just did it this way. That's why our leading have to be on point, y'all. Which is back to the title. You cannot be your child's friend. You cannot. Now, as they get older, you might say something like that. This is my best friend and my mama. This is my best friend and my daddy. This is my... But when you bringing a child up, I don't consider none of my children a friend. I consider them my seed. My children. And it's my duty, my job, to train them up before I leave her, to give it my all and all, to provide for them. See, most men think just because, man, I'm putting food on the table, I'm the breadwinner, but you always gone. I'm not going to, I tell people all the time, I don't need no hand clap for doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I hate the fact that child support ever came on the scene. Now you got to get the, the you got to get the man involved. <laughs> and I know everybody's situation is different. I'm not I'm not knocking people that's on child support. Man, whatever happened happened. You know you got to deal with what you got to deal with. I'm not here to beat you over the head about. It. I'm just saying the way y'all designed his covenant never supposed to be in you paying no child support. It never supposed to be in the government. It's, it's all up in your business and, and you got to be on this and that because the man of the house is gone. The devil loved that. I, I didn't even mean to go into all this in this video, but it all ties in together. Raise your children and stop being your child's friend. See, friends, you can... You can disagree with it and, and, and do this and do that. But no, when mom and daddy say something, that's it. Case closed. You up under their roof. It ain't up for discussion. I mean, let me let me rephrase that because things do need to be talked to, talked about. But at the same time, mom and daddy going to make their decision. And they'll say, that's final. And it should be final. Because they done been here longer than you. And they trying to save you some trouble. But I'm going to hit you with this before I close. Even with your leading by example, your children are still going to make their own decisions. They still going to fall and bump their head. Let them bump their head. See, that's the problem with a lot of people with parenting. They don't want to let their child fall. I got to get... Uh, when, you, when they was learning how to walk, didn't it come upon a time when you moved out the way? See, at first, I was standing there with my hands out. But once I saw you getting your balance and you wobbling, oh, you finna take them steps. I'm gonna get out your way so now you can walk on your own. You don't need my help no more. But there's still some grown people still waiting on somebody with their hands out. Because they done been, they done been destroyed growing up. They done been spoiled. And I'm gonna tell you something about spoiled people. They only care about themselves. They only going they only gonna look out for themselves. And they're gonna try to get everything they can out of you and use you up. They gone on about their business. With that being said, if you don't catch anything else I said in this video, stop being your child's friend and be the parent that the most high showed us to be. Shalom, y'all.